So as you can see, my kernel just prints a few messages and says how much memory is being used and um, the available memory. So at the moment, my kernel can allocate memory on the heap, so it has a fully working heap. It can um, do calculations such as like converting integers to strings, converting strings to integers. And uh, I'm really going to be showing the progress as I go along. Um, so far, um, I've got a working bootloader that'll boot the kernel, I've got working heap some uh, memory manipulating functions I've got the ability to print to the screen next will be um, virtual drives and virtual file systems so uh, I'll just quickly show you some of the code now Okay, so this is the bootloader, and it just um, loads the kernel into memory, basically, and then it jumps to it, well, calls it. Okay, I'll quickly show you some of the kernel functions now. Okay, this is the main kernel function that gets uh, invoked by the bootloader when it jumps, it basically jumps to the main, to the main function here, and then that'll print out this text here and it'll initialize the heap, and these interrupt handlers I have there, those interrupt handlers are for setting basically an interrupt handler, so whenever that interrupt's called the test interrupt function will be called and yeah I've got get string to get string from integer functions and get told memory size, memory use and I've got malloc and free functions and obviously it loops forever because I don't want to return from here okay um, let me show you some more files Okay, these are some, um, these are the functions for, well, these are the routines for creating interrupt handlers, and um, also if I scroll down a bit, you'll see that um, it's also for calling, function, uh, calling interrupts. So yeah, by there you can see that interrupts will be called by there. So if a C program wants to call interrupt, they can do it uh, from here and pass the AX, BX, CX and DX registers of the processor. Okay, this file just contains some printing functions to print to the screen, nothing special really. This contains out and in instructions for talking uh, directly to ports on the, the bus.
okay this is the heap so this is where memory is allocated I've got a heap size of 4 kilobytes at the moment and each heap block is 32 bytes I'm sure there's a lot better ways to implement a heap but this was just something I put together without uh, thinking much about it and uh, it works pretty well I can increase the heap size obviously but I just wanted a small heap for now just for testing but uh, I'll increase that uh, shortly so let me explain the heap, the heap to you then so this function here is self-explanatory uh, explanatory. you know it, uh, it'll get the total blocks um, that are free in a row so for example if um, if block 1, 2 and 3 are free but 4 isn't then there'll be 3 total blocks if you search for the, th uh, the free block, total free blocks from block 1 okay to get heap address from block number that, that just um, it basically converts the block number into a relative address um, actually an absolute address sorry that um, will basically be the data they're allowed to access in the heap once they've called the malloc function so the malloc function will um, basically search for a free block and if it can find one it'll allocate you that memory and um, obviously depending on the size um, that you need like the amount depending on the amount of data you need to allocate will depend on how many blocks you need and this malloc function will work all that out by using other functions in the um, in the program so down here we have our free function and this will free any blocks that are currently in use that basically if you want to free some memory you've allocated you pass its pointer and then the kernel will free all the, all the blocks associated with that um, allocation so obviously it's, it's important to avoid memory leaks to have this sort of setup and obviously init heap is just initializes the heap so that's pretty easy to understand so obviously we have get total free blocks you know that's all self explanatory the rest of the functions okay let me show you uh, the conversion functions okay so this gets the string from an integer um, basically you enter a number and it will convert it to a string for you so you can output it on a screen or whatever this counts the length of a string uh, it should be str uh, string uh, strlm that function but I haven't got around to creating the files for that but I will move that eventually this function here calculates powers again it needs to be moved um, and finally the convert string to integer will do as it says it will convert a string to an integer it does that by um, basically minusing hexadecimal 30 from the character converting it to a decimal number in the ASCII table and then um, it times it by the power of 10 length minus i minus 1 and it basically adds it to the result and that will result in a successful conversion
Okay, I think I've showed you everything. So this is the kernel so far. Um, I'll be implementing some basic functions and when I think uh, I'm ready, um, like when all those functions are implemented, like the standard C functions and stuff, I'll then do a, a video of me making a file system for this operating system. I'll also have a virtual file system layer as well so people can easily make new file systems. And finally, um, I'll need some sort of drive system so you can allocate drives to hardware but I'm going to call it portals and it's going to use uh, numbers instead of characters and um, yeah so you'll be able to open portals to hardware portals to the hard disk you'll be able to mount files all sorts of that cool stuff and eventually I might make it a multitasking operating system depending on how much time I want to spend on this project so subscribe and stay tuned thanks for watching Thank <laughs> you.